Hey friends, it's time for my favorite video of the entire year, Shada Campbell's 2024 Bullet Journal Setup. Welcome friends, my name is Shada Campbell and this is my 2024 bullet journal setup. I got a lot to say about it, but remember, you can skip right to the tutorial part or any section of it using the chapters below. So I've been making art videos on YouTube for about a decade now, but I do things a little differently around here. My videos aren't out there to show you how much I can do or even to express to you what you can do. I make videos to encourage you to get creative, to share that joy of making stuff. When we're kids, we love to doodle so much so that we will draw on our arms, the walls, our desk, but so many of us lose that as adults. And that's what I wanna inspire in you, just that joy of sitting down and doing some doodles. And bullet journaling is my perfect place to do that. Bullet journaling is a system of planning and prepping and organizing your life on paper for the future. And as many of you know, my personal bullet journal is kind of a meld of Bujo bullet journaling and an art journal. I love to doodle and make pretty spreads and I think the prettiness of it actually inspires me to keep and stay organized. So every December, I put out my setup video for the year ahead. And so in this video, we'll be creating calendars and trackers and setting up our entire bullet journal for 2024. Every year I choose a theme and I'm excited to share with you that this year's theme is pattern play. It's one that I came up with myself using my own brain. I did have a contest going. If I use your theme, I'll send a prize pack. I will be drawing a winner at random and that will be announced in the January setup which is coming out next week. So for this setup we're just going to focus on patterns. Patterns are a wonderful way to express creativity. You get to think about color palette and shape and you know what? It doesn't matter if you can can draw. When it comes to supplies, I recommend an Archer and Olive notebook. I'm using Tombow brush pens, colored pencils, and I treated myself this year to a couple Copic markers, which are alcohol-based. All supplies are linked in the video description. I've prepped a list of every single marker and color used, and that's available on my Patreon site. You can go over there and read it, even if you're not a member, so click the link in the video description, and please sign up as a free member if you're interested. For members of my Patreon, all of the journal spreads will be available after this video. You can go over there, download, print them, and they're all available as coloring pages. So you can add your own color palettes. Don't like subscriptions? I get that too. And I now have a Patreon storefront. The entire setup, all the downloads and printables is available for $15 in my Patreon shop. So go check that out after today's video. Okay guys, let's get into the mammoth 2024 bullet journal setup. I love the pattern play theme because it's fun and whimsical and it really takes the pressure off in terms of drawing well in your journal. Now we're going to begin with our nameplate page, which is just a page that says like Shada's journal. And that's what I always start with. And some of the patterns we're going to do are going to be very symmetrical. And then others are going to be a little bit more wild. And this is on the more wild side where we're just making a fun illustration that sort of takes up the page. And in this case, the illustration is made up of two things or the pattern is made of two things and this is flowers and leaves. So you can see I wrote Shada's journal down in the bottom corner and then I'm really just surrounding it with vines and leaves and in amongst these vines and leaves there are going to be a few spots where there are clusters of little flowers and so that's the basis for the whole pattern. We could make this beautiful patterned illustration as large or as small as we like and what I did is just started with a rectangle and then I'm just filling it in. And once that quick sketch is done, you might want to erase a little bit and then we're going to grab a couple markers. I'm starting with the Tombow water-based markers because they do not bleed through the paper. And I have chosen a nice sort of light periwinkle blue and I'm going to start by coloring in or drawing the flowers. So I've got three cluster areas where all the flowers are sitting. And for these flowers, I'm really just drawing like X's or four and five petal flowers. So very simple floral shapes. 
but the thing I love about patterns is we can get quite simple and we can still create something really, really beautiful. So start by doing your three or four clusters of flowers, simple floral shapes, and then grab a darker blue. Remember all of the colors that I'm using today are listed on my Patreon. Now it is free to go and join Patreon or you can sign up and become a member. It's a great way to support this channel and you'll get weekly bonus content. This week, of course, you'll have access to many of these spreads to print for your own journal. And anyone who signs up, regardless of whether you're a paid a member or a free member, will have access to the list of colors of all the markers and pencil crayons that I used in today's video. Okay, so all I'm doing is taking that darker Tombow blue and I am drawing the leaves and stems or vines. And what I do is I tend to draw like an oval leaf that comes to a bit of a point. And then I just sort of sh make those shaggy edges once I'm done coloring it in. So you can just make a smooth leaf and then kind of give it a toothy edge afterwards. And that's a really easy way to illustrate those leaves that are a little bit shaggy, a little bit toothy. And all of a sudden you're getting this very fairy tale storybook illustration. And it's really just made up of the most simple forms, shaggy or toothy leaves and these very, very simple flowers. And here's a couple more things that I really love about patterns. They tend to come together quickly and easily. They're all about color palettes. So if you've been struggling or just working on creating better color palettes, pattern play is a great chance for you to focus on that. And finally, they're also a great way to work on your layering. I'm just adding some little vines kind of peeking out wherever I don't really have room for a leaf. And then I'm done with the markers. Then I'm grabbing a dark blue pencil crayon and we're going to do just that. We're going to layer. So this gives me a chance to create some more detail, um, but everything is already kind of set up for me. So I don't have to worry about how good my drawing is. All I'm doing now are adding details to the flowers and the leaves. So you can see I add a center line on most of the leaves and then I add all these little veining lines on both sides. And then when it comes to the flowers, I'm just gonna put like an oval or an X at the center to give them a little bit more dimension and detail. So fun with layering, had a chance to pick out a pretty color palette and the whole journal nameplate page came together in 30 minutes. We've started out with a simple page that looks quite stunning. Okay, moving right along. This is going to be our 2024 cover page. So this one, we want to be all about pattern. And I'm also going to do a Dutch door. A Dutch door is just a half cut door, or in this case, cover page. So I mark center, drew a perfectly imperfect oval. I'm doing a little cute scalloped edge on the inside. And then we're going to create a pattern made of flowers and leaves. You guessed it. I've started with a circle on the center line, and then I'm going to place another one slightly lower. And we'll do a stem through the center. And then I'm going to kind of do like a wreath around that first circle, which of course will be a flower later on. And we'll make our little curved lines here into a wreath by placing pairs of leaves all along the length. So we're creating a pattern, but we're working with forms and shapes that we know, flowers and leaves, at least around here, that's what we know. Let's bring that center stem down. And then I'm going to do two little stems going off that center flower and they all have like heart shaped leaves coming off. I made one upside down. Working with symmetry, symmetry can get a little tricky, but you know, we're not going for perfect symmetry here. So don't worry if things are exactly even. I'm doing some more leaf shapes. I always have trouble getting things mirror image. Like if I put something facing one way on one side, I want to do it weirdly the same way on the other, not the opposite. Uh, I felt like things at the top were just a little too big. So all I did was erase and I'm just making everything a bit smaller, but it is the same design. That center flower was just a little too large. Um, but yeah, same design. I'm gonna work out those heart-shaped leaves again. There, they look a little better, a little more symmetrical this time. Okay, here's a chance for me to try out my Copic markers. This is my very first time using Copics, uh, which are alcohol-based markers, very high quality. They are refillable, so um, supposedly worth the price. I was eager to try them. I just picked out a few that were in the colors that I desired. So instead of buying like an $80 or $100 set, I spent about $60 and I got like the 10 colors that I really, really wanted. And that worked well for me. 
I did find working with them right off the bat, they're just incredible. Truly, I'm not just saying that because they're expensive. It was like working with pure color. It was almost like there was no medium because you're not getting any streaks. Just the color flows onto the page in the most incredible way and it dries almost instantly as well. So for this entire cover page, I'm using mainly Copics. Uh, they do bleed through the pages of the journal a lot. So that's just something to be aware of. And that's something I planned for as I was creating these spreads. Like we'll always put paper on the back of the next page or create a Dutch door where we're, we're simply just not using the back of this page. And that's the case here. I'm also using my Tombos for this cover page and it was just dependent on color. If I wanted the pink that I had in the Tombow, then that's what I used. If I wanted the blue that I had in the Copics, I used that one. So all together, I've got a nice color palette for the entire spread and it's kind of made up of some water-based markers, the Tombows, some alcohol-based markers, the Copics, and my uh, Faber-Castell uh, pencil crayons or colored pencils. I'm going to take a darker green here at the base and fill out some of the remainder of this pattern. Now you don't have to use the exact same supplies as I do. And in fact, you don't even have to use the exact same colors. If you'd rather go for a slightly more muted palette, by all means, go for it. You don't have to follow along with everything I'm doing. You can use this just as inspiration and then make things up and get creative as you go along. I used a lot of warm greens, peaches, pinks, and reds, a little bit of blue and and gray and I think it's all tied together really nicely with these periwinkle blues. And then once you've colored everything in with marker, whether it's alcohol based or water, and you've gotten rid of your pencil marks, grab those colored pencils because now we get to layer and add texture. But the illustrations, all the shapes and forms are already there. So we get to have fun adding lines on the leaves or petals on the flowers. You can just do a simple circle at the center of these flowers, like we did on the left-hand side. Or you can start with kind of a star shape and go out from there adding tons and tons of petals like I did, uh, making these flowers appear sort of like a chrysanthemum or a marigold. I'm adding a little bit of detail with my green colored pencils, uh, did some lines on these heart-shaped leaves with my blue, you know, so you can add dots, lines. It doesn't all have to be super detailed. I grabbed a dark periwinkle and decided to do a border around the entire pattern. It's almost like with this pattern, like we were designing a plate or a platter or something. Whereas the pattern on the left is really whimsical and wild. This one is much more symmetrical and they're both really fun to create for different reasons. Um, finish up by putting the date right at the top of the wreath there. I also used my black pen to add some lines on those gray leaves. And then to finish this one, I decided, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this, but I decided to take like a dark beige or a sort of a yellowy beige and give the entire pattern a beautiful warm background. I think this really made it pop. And I think around this point, I was like, what did I even just draw? Like, it's a little bit weird. It's not my typical cover page, but I can't do the same thing every year. And I'm proud of myself for pushing myself into new territory and just doing something weird and wonderful. And I'm excited to see where my floral patterns take me uh, throughout the new year. You are never too old after all to try something new. And a journal is a great place to experiment and do new things because hey, it really is just for you. And I hope that by the end of this year, I'll look back at my floral pattern art and think, wow, I've really come a long way. So I use my colored pencils to just add a few more details here, some hearts and some flowers. And then I was done, except I did mention that this was going to be a Dutch door. So all we have to do now is grab a cutting mat and a ruler and a little paper knife, exacto knife, whatever you have. And to cut the Dutch door, you'll place that ruler on the center line and just cut the straight parts and then use that little paper knife and carefully go around that oval. Once that design is cut out and the Dutch door is created, if you want to have a bit of fun, you could glue a colored piece of paper on the next page like I've done here. And that's it. The colored paper, of course, totally optional. And that's our nameplate page and cover page done. And we'll move right along to a resolutions page. 
Okay, so not everybody is into resolutions, and I get that. They sort of are a little bit gross at their heart, like I need to change something about myself this year. But I like to do them not in that sense of I need to lose weight, I need to be a different person, that's icky. I just like to say stuff like I will print photos this year. <laughs> I say that every year, and then I don't print that many photos, but I got to get them off my devices. Um, I'll learn a new craft, stuff like that. So I just like to set some fun intentions. I think that's probably a better word, but um, you could call it whatever you like. This resolutions or intentions page starts with a bit of a pencil guide. I just created a rectangle on the left side by drawing a line down there. And then I also marked where um, the Dutch door sits so that I don't go off uh, of that area. Then we wrote resolutions right through the center. And then what we're doing is just taking a white paint pen and I am using a Posca pen. And I'm just doodling flowers and leaves and lots and lots of dots to fill in space. You're going to want to do some large flowers and leaves as well as some smaller ones. And then yeah, just fill in everything with lots of little dots. That creates a pretty delicate pattern that's also really easy and simple to achieve. This is one where maybe you're not really Good at drawing but it's going to look so good <laughs> uh, if you want to do a little extra come in with a dark pencil crayon at the end and just do the centers of those larger flowers and there's your beautiful pattern all done uh, I'll write my resolutions you could also call it intentions and a few numbers here to make my list get rid of all those pencil marks clean it up and there's your intentions or resolutions page it's tucked neatly away behind that Dutch door and I love to start my year um, like literally in my journal with a few fun intentions all right let's flip over because we're going to create our journal key so bullet journaling is really a system of planning for the future. Once the internet kind of got a hold of it, it has become so many things. And in fact, if you're a fan of this channel and you like my bullet journal, you probably are really into something that's a cross between an art journal, a doodle journal and a bullet journal. But at its core, bullet journaling is this system of creating organization in your daily diary. And you do that through a, a simple key. And I I always create one. My bullet journal is basically just a glorified to-do list, like a really fancy, pretty to-do list. So my key or legend reflects that. My key starts with a rectangular, dark colored border. I've used a navy blue Copic, and then I'm using a white gel pen to create a pattern, uh, which is simply like a leaf design. But I wasn't loving the white gel pen. It was turning blue on top of the alcohol-based marker. So I reached for my Posca paint pen. I've got a set of them. And even though it did kind of take two coats of that paint pen, it was a little bit more of a clean white, although I did have to go over it twice. This is how simple and fun and beautiful pattern play can be. I'm creating a border that has a really simple leaf pattern, but it's pretty and it's fun and it's going to make a lovely little key. And speaking of pattern, let's put a pin in the key for just a moment because we're actually going to come over here to the left hand page and we're going to create some more pattern. I am using a light pink or peach Copic and I'm just drawing or doodling the messiest, cutest little flowers, like the type of flowers you doodle as a kid they're actually going to make a really whimsical and fun, you guessed it, pattern. So let's color in our doodles. You don't have to worry about the marker bleeding through because of course that dark gray or whatever colored paper you used is on the back side. And then we'll take a bright red, almost orangey red colored pencil. And again, we're doing a very free, almost childlike doodle right on top of our marker drawings, although not following the marker color exactly. And the result is something really joyful. And honestly, it takes about five, 10 minutes to create. I also really love the look of this blue with the red and pink. And now we'll come back over here to our key or legend, and we are going to put four squares, and this will create the majority of our key. Um, the squares represent basically my to-do list legend. So a blank square is a task, 
a square with a line through it is a task started, all the lines, task completed, and then if I put an X through there, that means the task got canceled. So it might say something like film the January plan with me video. That would be the task when I've started filming, it's got a line through it. Uh, when it's completed, you get it. I also have a heart for anybody's birthday, um, an X for events, and then list items. Like if I had stuff I needed to purchase at the store, I just use a little circle. I'll finish my key off by titling it key. I know, pretty radical. I did a lowercase print, went around it to make sort of a bubble letter. Although frankly, with a large marker, you don't really need to plan out a bubble letter. You're going to do quite a thick print. And then once I'd used the pink, I went around it again with that fiery red and brought that um, sort of warm color palette from the left over here to the right. And it looks so pretty with the blue. I'll thicken up the right-hand side, give a bit of a messy shadow to my key title. We'll use that Posca paint pen or white gel pen to go over those leaf, the leaf pattern one last time. And there she is all done and looking good. Let's flip over. We do have some bleed through because of those Copic markers, but we're going to create, you guessed it, another pattern. Let's grab another piece of colored paper. In this case, I'm using a light yellow or cream. And the nice thing about layering in some extra paper is that I can keep working with my Copics or whatever alcohol-based markers you might be working with because we're not worried about bleed through. And this is gonna be a pretty strawberry pattern, which starts with just a whole bunch of lumpy circles or you can make heart shapes. Um, you could do a few going off the edge of the page. It would have been smart if I just took a really large piece of paper, did a pattern and then cut it down later to the size of the journal. That's not what I did though. So, <laughs> you know, do as I say, not as I do. Once you've put those strawberry shapes in place, and I say that very lightly, just make messy circles. We're going to take a red or really any color of marker and we're going to add detail. So I start with three little leaves at the top an outline of the berry, which is thicker on the right and uh, thicker on the left, much thinner on the right. And then I just do these messy seed shapes, basically just brush marks in the center of each berry. Once you've turned about half of them into strawberries, grab a different color. I am using the contrasting red and green, and we are going to finish the remainder of them. Thicker on the left, thinner on the right, three little leaves at the top. It's such a simple pattern. Again, this is something that's going to take 10 minutes and it creates such whimsy and joy in your journal, not to mention beautiful color. I'll grab my glue stick. We're gonna paste that in. And for now, we're going to leave that right-hand page blank. If you wanna see what I do there, you need to watch the January 2024 setup, which comes out next week. For now, let's flip over and it's time to create our year at a glance. We'll start our year at a glance by pinning the page down. And then this is very important. You need to flip to the next page because this spread includes a pop-up illustration that's almost like a bookmark. This is your calendar page. You're gonna to refer to it often throughout the year, especially if you don't wanna be looking at your phone while you're bullet journaling. So start your little pop-up bookmark by drawing sort of a rounded rectangle right in the center. And I brought mine out about nine or 10 squares in the grid on both sides and just sort of worked out the shape, sketched it in, erased everything, cleaned it up, thickened the border, and then finally did a kind of striped or checkered pattern all along that border. Then I continued my pattern play by drawing these little flowers. They almost look like four finger hands, one in each corner. We'll do a, a continuation of the border with some little dots. And then right in the center, we're going to do a beautiful, somewhat symmetrical floral motif. So we've got this sort of opening up of two uh, leaves on both sides and then two stems that kind of go to grow towards one another. It's really symmetrical and yet it's kind of not that symmetrical, so it makes it really easy to draw. And since this is a pop-up bookmark page, I don't have to worry about bleed through. And uh, so I can use my beautiful Copic markers that I'm kind of excited about. So I'm using a really warm green. I'm also going to use that dark blue that we used in the key and do my little checkerboard or striped pattern all the way around the edge. I'm just using the tip of the brush marker to do really thin, delicate line. And then the nice thing about the brush marker is you can do thick and thin work. So I'll color in all these little stripes or checkers as well. 
This seems like a really good time to remind you that if creating all these spreads is not your thing, or you don't want to draw them, you just want to color them, which is a lot more chill, you can print all of my spreads. They are available on Patreon. It's only three bucks a month to sign up or $33 for an entire year. Or if subscriptions aren't your thing, I now have a storefront on my Patreon. So you can shop all of my worksheets, coloring pages, and of course, my journal spreads. The entire 2024 pack is available. Head over to patreon.com slash Shady Campbell or just use the link in the description. I was using that light peachy pink to color in the background of this floral motif, but then I decided I really need to draw the flower. So I grabbed um, this dark yellow Tombow, which is a water-based marker, and I just started basically doodling ovals and little curved lines and made this fun floral shape at the top. And then I'll grab that peach marker and fill in the rest of it. And now we've got a balanced, beautiful floral motif right at the center of our year at a glance, or what will be our year at a glance. I will continue with the pattern that I laid out, but this time I'm using a little bit of colored pencil and I went for like a dark magenta and we're doing those kind of four finger hands or flowers. And then I'll use a Tombow um, marker just to do that dot border. And again, just working with a dark magenta or burgundy. We'll also use a brown colored pencil to sketch or doodle some messy floral shapes on what is basically just a bunch of brush marks that we did with the water-based Tombow. I also used a colored pencil to sketch some dark green lines on those leaves. You can get the entire color palette, all of the colors of the Tombows, Copics, and Faber-Castell colored pencils that I used in today's video are listed. The list is available on my Patreon. You do not have to be a paying member. You can go sign up for free and you will still get access to that list. Uh, I just used scissors to cut out that sweet little bookmark and now we have the um, task of creating our year at a glance. So the year at a glance is really just all of the monthly calendars laid out so that like I sort of hinted at you don't have to constantly be looking at your phone when you're doing your monthly setups throughout the year. I like to just have a totally analog thing that is self-contained and so what I'm going to do is I laid out um, squares. Now my my squares are grids of eight by seven, seven across and then eight high. You need about three squares to write the um, month title and the days of the week. And then you need about five squares to do most calendars. Some calendars are six um, if you know they start on a Saturday or whatever, but you are leaving two squares in between. You know, you get it. It's a bit tedious, but you set up the 12 calendars, put a little colorful highlight across the days of the week, and there you go. That's your year at a glance page. Another good time for me to remind you that you can print all of this stuff. You can download and print everything you see me doing today. Well, almost everything, especially the year at a glance, and that's available on Patreon. You can sign up to support the channel every month. It's just three bucks, or you can just buy all the spreads as a pack at $15 US. So I did a nice title 2024 with marker and then I just went around it, sort of highlighted it or made it pop by doing a colored pencil outline. I'm getting very colorful this year and I'm kind of proud of myself for that. If you've been here for a minute, you know that I've experimented with color and got more and more comfortable with color over the years. Creating a palette that speaks to me is sort of a labor of love. And this year I think it's going really well. So that's why I definitely want you to have access to all of the marker colors and colored pencil numbers that I used. And that is our lovely and colorful year at a glance with the built-in bookmark all done. Year at a glance is complete. You can definitely download and print that in my Patreon shop or sign up to Patreon if you don't want to write out all those tiny calendars. And then the next setup we're going to do for me, it's going to be a page where I can record all my YouTube video ideas. But if you don't have YouTube video ideas, let's just call it a brain dump or somewhere where you can make lists of something that is kind of an ongoing thing throughout your life. Okay, our patterned brain dump or ideas page, it starts with, well, a pattern and I'm using a ruler. I'm going to make my grid the width of the ruler, which means creating a, a grid really easy because you just, you know, using the ruler as your guide. So all of these little diamonds are the exact width of that ruler. And there you go, you've got an angled checkerboard, really simple and just did that in pencil. And then now what I wanna do is create a motif that will go inside of 
of each little diamond. I was going to do it in marker, but I realized let's draw it in pencil first. It basically starts with a circle, a messy circle at the top, and then a stem and two leaves. And the leaves really fill in the diamond. Now by creating a simple floral sketch that really fills in the area of a single diamond or square, we're going to very easily create a striking pattern. So you can see me just doodling these flowers. They're really, really basic. They honestly look a bit messy right now. Um, the water-based markers, they leave a lot of streaks, but that's not going to matter because we are going to come in with a darker colored pencil and we are going to really fancy uh, these flowers up. So this is one of those things that you can just put on a podcast or your favorite album and just totally get lost in it. You're not gonna have any stress of, oh, am I drawing? drawing it well? Is it going perfectly? Like it doesn't matter. You're just doodling this messy flower. If you look closely, all of my leaves are like a different length, a different shape. It does not matter. And once you have put all those flowers in there, might take you 20 minutes, half an hour, we're going to come in with a nice sharp colored pencil in a darker blue and we are going to draw a very similar flower to what we did on the cover page where it's sort of like a messy chrysanthemum or marigold. You'll also go over the stem and make those messy little leaves. So start with a basic floral doodle and then you go around and you do another sort of wheel or crown of petals and then another wheel of petals or circle of petals and I did about three layers for most flowers. And then of course you go over the stem and the leaves and I gave my leaves kind of a toothy edge along the bottom, smooth edge along the top. There's what it looks like as you come to completion. All of a sudden you've got this really detailed, amazing pattern. And like I said, it's so simple. Every part of this is something that's doable, but when you just take the time, maybe 40 minutes to sit and actually draw it, it creates something so striking that looks almost machine made, but of course it has that hand-drawn romance and charm. We're gonna clean it up, get rid of all those pencil lines, and then here's how we turn that beautiful pattern into a two-page spread that can be an ideas page, a brain dump page, or whatever you like. You'll take your light blue Tombow or whatever color you use for the base of the flower, do a thin straight border along one edge, and then draw a whole bunch of semicircles on the edge of that straight edge. Basically, you're creating a nice scalloped edge border that goes all the way around the page, and when you're done, take a dark blue pen or use that same colored pencil and just give it a nice edging. Using the light blue Tombow, add a little bit of a highlight at the center of the page for your title. In this case, mine will say video ideas, but you could write brain dump, journal spread ideas, um, you know, stuff you need to get done through the year, whatever. And to do this, I use that same dark blue pen and I did my I forget, I used to have a name for this one. It's where you just basically double up the thickness of your simple print and it makes a very cutesy and messy, but also bold title font. There we go. Video ideas pattern page complete. Let's flip over because it's time to create our yearly goals tracker. I really enjoy creating a goals tracker as a way to kind of focus in on what I want to achieve in the following year and then hopefully see some of them get achieved. <laughs> so this goals tracker has a fun symmetrical pattern that is basically bordered by two simple tree illustrations. So I've done two um, vertical lines and then they're joined by a nice horizontal line. Both trees have four curving branches, pairs of curving branches, and we're just doing pairs of leaves on those branches and then some little heart-shaped pears or apples or some sort of fruit. <laughs> and we'll do the same thing on the left as on the right. You don't have to worry about perfect symmetry. That is not important. The idea here is that we're attempting to kind of create a pattern. We're going to sketch a bird right in the center. So just start with a sort of cylinder shape and then put a sort of rounded triangle through it. And that becomes the two wings. You can see how I just work out this very folk arty bird in pencil. 
Then we'll grab a dark brown marker. This is one marker that was not in my color palette. I realized I wanted something that was sort of like a rust color. So this is a koi marker, um, but you can buy a similar color in a Tombow, I'm sure. I used my black Faber-Castell brush pen to, uh, the pit pens are great if you have a couple because you can actually put white gel pen on top of them and it will not bleed. They are not alcohol, they are not water. These pit pens, they are actually India ink. And so they just work really beautifully with the white gel pens. So that's why I will always have a couple pit pens in my journal sort of kit. And for the tree, I just thickened up the trunk a little bit and it gets thicker as it goes down towards the base. I also use the pit pen to do a little bit of an outline on my heart-shaped apples. I'm going to finish up this symmetrical border pattern with a couple flowers and maybe even some berries in the corners. And then of course we'll color the bird in as well and we'll use the same color as we used for our apples, whatever color you've done there. I'm really enjoying these patterns because they kind of make doing simple drawings look really striking. And I think when you're working in your journal, you want to keep it simple. Uh, sometimes my journal illustrations just get a little too complicated and I feel like that alienates some viewers and I don't want to do that. I want to create drawings that are really striking and beautiful in their simplicity because I know that not all of us have time to create really intricate journal spreads. I myself obviously struggle with that as a parent. Even though this is my job, I still sometimes find it hard to find the time to work on my bullet journal. And so that's what this year is all about, creating beauty in the simplicity and I think pattern play is a really fun way to do that and it creates a wonderful thread through the year. Okay to finish my um, goals tracker I'm just writing all these different headers like personal, family, health. You know health could be something like I want to move my body more. I want to make sure I'm doing uh, yoga at least once a week. Work goals might be like oh I want to um, put out a real every week or something like that, you know, for me. So you can set some intentions and goals for the year and then track them here. And I think that's a really nice way to just kind of take pause and think a little bit about what we want to achieve this year. And that is really what bullet journaling is all about, kind of future planning, goal setting, intention setting, writing down affirmations, it's good stuff like that. I did a really simple print here in pencil, just writing goals 2024, um, kind of in behind my bird. And then I went around the print, thickened it up, went over everything in pen, and then decided to do a little bit of a shadow to finish off the title. I also placed hand-drawn boxes with a shadow as well around all of my goal headers. And that's it. That is the goals tracker for this year complete. We'll flip to a fresh page because it's time for our final spread, a yearly movement tracker. I've never done a tracker quite like this before that includes a grid of every day of the year. So here's how it starts. I've got 14 squares across and 33 down. That gives me ample room for the 12 months of the year and the 31 days in each month. Then we are going to take a ruler and a pen. I'm using a 0.7 millimeter nib Meloto black liner. Remember all supplies are linked in the video description. And we're going to use that ruler to create a nice rectangle. And then we're going to do the grid. And I'm not going, I'm gonna spare you my head popping in every second there. And that's what my grid looks like. I didn't like that I did the lines right up through the days or the months. It was just so many lines. So I ended up just taking that black pit pen and just coloring that in. It looks a lot cleaner now. I used a white gel pen to tidy up anywhere my lines went outside of the grid. And then we'll use a smaller black liner, fine liner, to write the days of the month. So there's the grid. Now you can track the movement that you did on every day of January, every day of February, and frankly, all 365 days of the year. Now, this is not a workout tracker. I'm not trying to work out more or anything or lose weight or any of that toxic stuff. I do, however, need to move my body more. Uh, you guys have heard me speak a lot about, you know, just being sick in that toddler phase where we're all kind of catching Sully's little flus and colds. So I'm just inspired to make sure that I'm like doing a bit of yoga, going for a 15 minute walk, just moving my old bones. That's all this is. <laughs> um, 
but a yearly tracker that's set up like this, you could, you know, use for whatever. It could be about tracking any kind of habit, basically. Now we're, of course, you guessed it, going to create one last pattern here. And I'm going to use um, most of the Tombos that you've seen sitting here for this entire video. And we're going to do something really colorful. So I'm using dark and light blue, as well as yellow and light pink and magenta and some brown. And I'm just doing a really graphic floral pattern. Now I start my pattern by deciding on a set amount of shapes. So I've got a pink and blue tulip, a light blue leaf. I've got a yellow berry, um, this kind of magenta messy daisy. And then what else am I going to do? I kind of wasn't sure if I was going to add another shape. So I started repeating. Once you've decided on three or four shapes, you can bin begin the process of repeating those shapes and creating your pattern. Simple as that. And my tracker grid page, I actually folded under creating a no cut folded Dutch door. That of course becomes another kind of bookmark, making this tracker really easy for me to find every day. And so I'm going to take my pattern from the left hand page across the folded tracker page. So we repeat all the shapes and we also place them peeking out from behind the grid. Whenever you're ready, you can take a fine liner and go over that let's move title that's right in the center. I just sketched mine again with a simple print and cursive, thickened it by going around my print and cursive with pencil. And then when I was happy with the way it looked, I'm going over it with my fine liner. I'll also take a light gray Tombow and kind of fill in or color in the letters, but I'm sort of missing them by a little bit so that the colored um, cursive is sort of offset from the fine liner. Once that's done, I can continue my pattern, making sure to just really fill in everywhere, in behind the letters, in behind the tracker, and it creates a really beautiful pattern play that um, is going to make you want to get moving. <laughs> Once you're happy with the pattern, you might need a smaller um, design item. And I just used like a really messy flower in light brown. And that helped me fill in space wherever I needed to fill in. <laughs> okay, let's flip over and create the key to this tracker. So the key, there will be a different color for each sort of movement. I tend to go for walks, runs. I do a little bit of uh, step. I just have this step that I step up and down if I really can't get out for a walk. Strength right at the bottom. Don't like doing strength training. And then we'll grab our markers and we'll decide on a color for each one. Then as you go through each day of the year, whatever your main movement was for that day, you can color in. And at the end of the year, you'll be able to see, oh, wow, I really did a lot of strolling <laughs> or I really did a lot of yoga or whatever it is. Just kind of a fun colored grid that shows how you moved throughout the year 2024. And I think that's going to be a really exciting thing to do. And hopefully I can keep it up. Hopefully I don't forget to do it. <laughs> Well, friends, that brings us to pretty much the end of our 2024 yearly setup. This is always one of my absolute favorite videos to create. I give a lot of thought to what the theme will be every year. And I just love producing this mammoth piece of content that hopefully helps you learn how you want to bullet journal, helps you to set some intentions for the year and get organized and excited um, for what's ahead. That's my movement tracker complete, just added to the um, pattern with a little bit of colored pencil. And let's flip back and take a look at what we've created so far. So my journal this year starts with a sweet blue patterned nameplate page where I just wrote shade is journal. We have our pattern Dutch door cover with the resolutions page sitting below tucked away. Another pattern on that resolutions page, of course. We have a bright and cheerful key for the journal. We have our strawberry pattern. Remember to come back to the January setup next week to see what we create there. We have our year at a glance 2024 with all the calendars. We have our video ideas or brain dump pattern page. And then we have our goals tracker for the year ahead. Really like the simple color palette on that. And then finally, we have our movement tracker for the entire year, which is on a Dutch door. Thanks for watching today, guys. I had so much fun. This is one of my favorite videos to create every year. I put a lot of thought and love into it. The color palettes mean more to me than you will know. I think about them. I stress about them. I want everything to be 
just so every year. And I hope that you can feel the love that is in this video. Remember, you can get all of these spreads. You can download and print them out and they're all available as coloring pages. So you get to do your own color palettes. That's on my Patreon. You can head to the storefront. The entire 2024 Bujo pack is $15 US, or you can sign up and support this channel every month. It's $3 or save by doing a yearly membership at 33. And for my wonderful community on Patreon, that $3 gets you not only all of these spreads, but new bonus content every single week, plus access to the four or five year backlog of content that already exists there. Thank you guys for watching today. Thanks for planning along with me and be sure to catch the January setup video next Friday. After that, I'll be away for two weeks. I won't leave my patrons hanging. There will be a bonus video over there on the first week of January. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.